Hey guys, and welcome to Doing Things Dan's Way. So today I have my uh, Ford C-Max here, and this time I'm getting the engine light on, and what the engine code is saying on my code reader is that the EGR valve is not responding or it's given problems. And so this is what the EGR valve looks like. This is the replacement. It basically just takes the exhaust gases and puts them back into the intake. And it's under you know a motor control, and it's got a bunch of connections going. So this has gone bad in this car. So I'm gonna show you, um, hopefully quickly, <laughs> what it takes to get it out. Uh, the shop manual says that you're supposed to drain the coolant out of both cooling systems completely and remove a lot of things. I'm going to try and do it with a few less removals by removing the throttle body. So let's get started. Don't go away. This is Justin's Dance Way. Don't forget in the description down below, I have links to all of the tools and the EGR valve and gasket and all the stuff you need to get this job done. So under here, we have to remove the whole intake manifold, both these intake pipes. And eventually we'll take out, I think, the throttle body here as well. This is eight millimeter. This is a seven millimeter. Tucked in back here is an eight millimeter. And down here, it's another seven. We're just loosening these. PVC here is attached by this clip. So I'll pull that, that clip out. And then we need to get this guy off. So you lift up on that little red lock right there. And then you can push on it. Just under the under the red, you push there to pull. And that comes right off. get this whole assembly out of the way. This just pops out. Just lift up on it and pull it off the stops. And while you have this out, you can pull off all these screws and get to the air cleaner. Okay, EGR valve is under that hose right there. That hose is going down into this pipe. So the top of the EGR valve is right there, which is this. Remove this clip here. So to release the lock. And then push right there. Pop that off. These bolts are all eight millimeter. There wasn't all that much in there. Okay, that's loose. 
see if I can get the light on the back. Okay, I'm on it, but I'm not at all confident. The angle is just all wrong here. So I'm gonna go back to the smaller one, see if I can get a better angle on it and I can extend this tool if I need to. So this, I can't even see around the corner. I'm just literally doing this by feel. Okay, that one got on there and it got on there much more convincingly. Time for a different trick here. Make sure it's on the really square. And we're pulling with. Okay. There we go. Just, that was enough to break it free. Okay, we go ahead and take the this connector off. Pushing hard with my thumb. There we go. Now this wire comes up over here. So I can give it a little help. Out of the way, a little bit. Okay. That's the bolt I was pulling out. Now I can get this, this front one out. More for this hose right here, this would be a lot easier. If you don't have one of these, <laughs> these things are awesome. They just let you get in there and, you know, give you all kinds of torque with just your fingertips uh, to tighten or untighten things. I'll put a link down below to that too, just so uh, you can grab one if you don't have it. Okay, there's a second bolt, looks like the first. Here she comes. Okay. Yeah, she's all dark and black and yuck. Now the seal didn't come out with it, which is a bummer. I was hoping the, the seal would come off. Yeah, okay, there's the seal. It's like a stamped metal piece. Now when you do this, you of course you do want to install a brand new uh, gasket. Of course this and the other thing are linked down below. You can see here the the way that will fit on there. And when the bolts go through, they will they will get captive by this. So we put this through, we can actually go ahead and push it on there, get it going. And it'll actually hold the bolts in place. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that down there and start walking these in.
You know, the back one of those tools, this is too big for. So let's we'll use this by itself at least to get it going. You know, your hands will be tired tomorrow when you're doing this. <laughs> Thumb and pointer finger doing all the work. Yeah, that one's close to tight. Okay. This is tight as I feel comfortable doing it. Okay. Oh, well, we're almost there. Let's put this hose back on. If you can squeeze that hard enough to get it to to click like that, then the hose stays loose, and then you can stick it on, slide it down, and then pop it free. Okay, that's all the way down. There it goes. Okay, we can put this uh, connector back on. Okay, that's all good. Let's go ahead and get this uh, throttle body put back on. Okay. And get this back over here the intake side and we'll go bring over the uh, the whole intake On. Don't forget this connector here. Try not to push on the wires. They're kind of exposed. Okay. That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. That's good. That one's tight. Alright, I think we're done. Let's put all these tools away and fire it up. Okay, last step here is to get rid of this engine light. So I'm going to plug in my ODB scanner here. Uh, this is a Wi-Fi uh, style version. Just plug it in and then start the car up. In fact, we're going to put it into uh, start mode without pushing our foot on the pedal. We just want it to power up for the sake of uh, resetting the, uh, the trouble code.
go ahead and connect to the access point that that ODB scanner has. So here you'll see something called Wi-Fi ODB or something like that, and you'll connect to that one. I'm just going to go into the app here. I have the Forescan uh, light. Now we can click connect on the bottom left here, and what we'll see is it'll scan through and get all the settings from the vehicle. So this does take sometimes as much as 30 seconds or so to get it uh, fully loaded. It's asking if we have additional module capability, which this device doesn't, so I click no. And then we are able to get back to the main screen. So here we can click on air codes, and you can see we get a list of all kinds of computers. And if we click on this one here for the EGR, we can see the details. Uh, we see the code number there and uh, some idea of what it's about. If you click on that blue word EGR, it'll pull up the internet and give you some ideas on what that trouble code means. So now what we're gonna do is go back and we're actually gonna click on reset DTC trouble codes. And it'll say, are you sure? You say yes. And then it'll reset them and ask you to recycle or to power cycle the engine. So we turn the engine off and come back on again. And hey, look, we don't have any error codes anymore. Okay. Put on the brake, start the car. See it pop up. Ready to drive. And you see we do not have a engine light on anymore. So now we need to drive it around to confirm and you know let the engine actually run and actuate that EGR uh, valve and confirm we don't have a problem. But that should be the end of the of the uh, error code. Well, there you have it, guys. That was the whole process. Uh, that really isn't so bad. Uh, you really don't get a lot of uh, liquid leakage from the cooling system. So just stuff a rag down in there and let the, the water just kind of dump onto the rag. Don't forget in the description down below, I have links to all of the tools and the EGR valve and gasket and all the stuff you need to get this job done. So if you like what you saw here, smash on my face to just subscribe so you get notifications about the next video coming out. Hit up here for more C-Max content. I'm basically making a video on everything I have to fix and this is a fix or repair daily Ford, right? So until next time guys, be blessed.